Welcome back to another PT Pearl from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. Today we're coming at you from our sauna. There we go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> and we are talking all about cryotherapy, ice treatment. Should you ice? Should you not? Is it bad? Especially when you have injury. So what is happening? We're going to break it all down for you. I know, such an adventure here. But, you know, I think what's so beautiful about this topic is it's been debated a lot. And you can look on the internet like most things and people will argue to the death one side versus another. And so it's really important to start to understand for yourself, you know, well, what does this actually mean? What is beneficial? What is not beneficial for me to know? And really starting to understand it, you know? I just like, why does it always have to be that way where people like, yes, ice is good or no, ice is bad. Like, and those are the only two answers. I, I don't get why people feel like we need to argue things in that as, you know, bipartisan an issue. Like, that's not the case. There, there might be some times that it's good. It's, it's always a it depends answer. And that's what we're learning if you've listened to any of our episodes. Right. And we're always learning. And I think that's the beauty of not getting so like you can only do this or this is bad. This is good. Be very careful when even clinicians are using that with you. You know, it just it depends Maybe in your circumstance, something is more beneficial. Something can be less beneficial, but it doesn't mean it make it wrong or bad or some other therapist using it was not informed. You know, they're just maybe using it for a different intent because I think it's important to know the history of how this all began. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Which is really cool, right? Yeah. And a lot of people will recognize the acronym RICE, mm -hmm. right? Especially if you're in athletic training, personal training, PT. Rice, rest, ice, compress, and elevate. And this is what this guy, Dr. Merkin, in 1978, did his research and he said, oh, this is how we need to treat all injuries. We rest it, we compress it to prevent that swelling, we ice it to bring down inflammation or whatever it is, and we elevate to get the gravity to bring the blood back to the heart. Right. This is how we're going to treat injuries. Right. Exactly. Because we saw inflammation rushing to an injury as a bad thing. Yeah. And they said, oh, Essentially. inflammation. What can we do to get that to go down? Mm -hmm. Bring some cold to the area. Bring some ice to the area to get the vessels to constrict a little bit to reduce the inflammation in that area. And bada bing, bada boom, we're good. Right. Exactly. What we have learned over time is, well, first of all, from rice, then it changed in 1998, it went to price. So rather than just icing, we then switched to, okay, first we need to protect whatever injury happened. Mm -hmm. And then we can go right into our rice formula, right? Of rest, ice, compress, and elevate but we have to protect whatever is going on. So especially if you have an injury out on a field or if you have, you know, you're suddenly in a traumatic accident or something like we have to do whatever we can to protect that body part, that injury first. And then we go into the rice uh, formula, which is what happens. Yeah, which to me protect rest uh, I mean, if you strain something, maybe like getting something around it, maybe right. if you're like stabilizing it in that right. very initial stage, whatever. And then, you know, the next change that we saw in that formula was in 2012, some people came out and they said, okay, resting, is that what we want to be doing? Or do we want to be putting some tension through those muscles and tendons and whatnot? So they changed it to police, which means protect optimal loading, replace that R or for rest so optimal loading which kind of gives you some flexibility like okay the day after i roll my ankle what's optimal right a lot different than two weeks after i roll my ankle right what's optimal for loading mm -hmm. so right here i'm like all right cool we're seeing some progress yeah. that gives people flexibility within this structure and then the ice or the ice was still ice compress and elevate and the whole reason for this is because we started to realize that rest wasn't the best option for people mm. like oh amazing we actually can load the area we can put some tension as even coming out of surgery you yeah. know 
and it's okay and it's not scary and as long as we're doing it in a progressive manner that is pertinent to the injury at the time, then it makes sense. We realize when we're resting, we're not really telling all of these cytokines and we're not really telling all of these things what to do. Yeah, they're and just coming to protect. They're just coming and they're like, okay, what do we do? And since we're sitting there doing nothing, they're just like, we're going to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they start laying down all these tissues so that you might not be able to move as much if you're not getting that optimal loading where now exactly. we've added in optimal loading, which again, right away might just be <laughs> the, the classic with a rolled ankle is your alphabet yeah. or your ankle circles or ankle pumps, ankle pumps. And I love that you added ankle pumps because it, it shows that optimal loading doesn't mean that you're all of a sudden going walking or jumping yeah, or doing something. Jumping. <laughs> right, exactly. Optimal loading can just be movement, but it's not saying you're just resting and you're going to lay in bed and watch Netflix and do nothing. Dr. Merkin, who came up with the RICE protocol, yeah. all of a sudden retracted mm. his protocol and said, you know what, right now, this might not be the best thing initially when you have injury. Rest, ice, compress, elevate. And that doesn't mean that he maybe took out all of the aspects of it, but he yeah. said, for an initial injury, I don't think anymore now that we have more current up-to-date research understanding of the physiology of what's really happening within the body i don't think that this might would be the best protocol for someone in science to be able yeah. to separate from the thing that they founded yes. from the, the science that they came up with rather than holding himself down and trying to stick with this this rice technique um for him to come out and say okay i've learned a ton and science has been able to show a lot of new things yeah. and i think there might be a little bit better way to explain this yes which is where we come up with the next acronym which is peace and love peace and love <laughs> <laughs> so hippie <laughs> so hippie but it's it's really incredible because it, it starts to add in a lot of education right and it starts to add in a lot of other components that again add some flexibility depending on where you're specifically at mm -hmm. so peace protection elevation avoid anti-inflammatories compression and education and then love being load optimism i thought you were going to do it. vascularization and exercise yeah so the thing that i love about this is it starts to add in some really cool components like avoid anti-inflammation. Yeah. Again, and this is tough to talk about uh, in definites. Because, right, exactly. Because again, avoid anti-inflammation. There's a, there's a time and place for everything. Yes. But what we're saying here is that we don't want to introduce things into the system. Initially. Initially that are going to really mess up our body's understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if we add too much in, if we're in that next week, just like throwing the anti-inflammatories into our system, um, doing a lot of <laughs> systemic cryo stuff so that our body can't just take a minute to pause, realize what's going on in the area, and then start to do some of those loadings, start to do some of the more education, educational based stuff. Again, still protecting and elevating that foot because those things in an in initial stage of injury are going to be really important. Right. I mean, it's it's funny because in one sense you are saying avoid anti-inflammatories. In the next sense, you're saying compress and elevate. So people are still going to be like, well, I don't understand because essentially you're trying to avoid too much inflammation. And I think that's where that's that's where we're all pretty much in agreement. Yes, we want inflammation. Inflammation is healthy. It's a natural system within our body. It helps to clear out. It helps to rebuild. And if we then get stuck with too much inflammation, we decrease mobilization, we increase pain. Yeah. You know, all of these other factors start to happen. So compression and elevation playing a role still within that. And I think one really, really important distinguisher is between inflammation and swelling and edema. Yes. Two completely different things. You know, we can have a, a smaller amount or a normalish amount of inflammation in a joint that could then become very swollen or edematous or, you know, have a lot of fluid in it that then, like you said, will restrict the mobility, will yeah. restrict our ability to do some optimal loading, mm -hmm. right? And then that's where it could impact the healing process because then we can't get back to those ankle pumps we were talking about. And the thing that, again, makes sense to me when I think in my science physical therapy brain, when I put ice on something, what's it going to cause? It's going to cause surface vasoconstriction. Yeah. 
it's going to cause slightly less blood to be coming to that surface level. So there, you know, we might reduce some of the fluids being pumped into the area by our heart. And when we talked about pain, when we put something cold on our skin, we have different nerves that sense that temperature. Mm -hmm. And it's called gating. Mm -hmm. You know, we have mechanical gating, which is when we rub something when it hurts. And then this is more of a temperature or a sensational based gating where we put something cold on and it's proven to reduce our levels of pain because it actually kind of distracts our brain. One thing that I want to say, the love part where it's yeah. loading and O oh, is optimism. Yeah. And I think it's so cool that they have that in there as a former athlete, as an athlete yourself, like you know that one of the toughest things and, and you don't have to be an athlete, you have to be somebody who moves through the world. <laughs> and as soon as you have an injury that prevents you from moving functionally or moving purposefully how you normally do, um, it, it kind of hits you mentally or emotionally to a degree. And to be able to have that optimism and say, okay, this is part of the process. I'm, I'm starting to load. It's a little bit uneasy. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be back to normal. Just to flip that script and have optimism and say, this is part of the process. Yeah. Like how cool is that? Yeah. Like my body's actually working for me, not against me. Totally. When I hear that, when I, when my body all, all of a sudden starts to swell because something happened, that's because it has these natural processes to work to help me not to fight against me. So I don't want to continue to fight against it. I want to allow it. And then if there's extra, okay, then maybe I can do a little bit for this. Then this is one of our favorites. This is what I love. I, uh, not my favorite, but if I'm going to talk about, you know, doing ice training, doing, mm. it is, it ha has such amazing benefits, but, and we're going to talk about those like anything like exercise, like healthy mindset, we have to be practicing it on a continual basis. But in general, like we have seen studies that, you know, if you start to use this on a regular basis in general, it can help to even improve brain function. Yeah. It can help to improve your immune system, you know, and there's, there's so many healthy benefits that come with just exposing your body to these healthy stressors, meaning a healthy stressor is something you knowingly are going into to that you're, you know your body's going to freak out at first and you're going to teach it a different process, which is also so mental and yeah. such a benefit. So like my recommendation for people who, you know, deal with anxiety issues mm. who who deal with panic attacks like if you show your body that you can control it in a super stressed out situation because dipping into an ice bath is a super stressful situation yeah. and if you you know can control your breath and come into a complete peace and relaxation you're like oh there's actually a different way that i can approach a lot of things well there you have it, cold therapy, local and systemic from the sauna. So hopefully we'll, we'll bring you one on heat therapy soon. But comment below if you have any questions and just use this a little more to think about how you use ice when you have injuries in the future. <laughs>